this interview is for the Split This Rock blog mm -hmm. uh, for a festival coming up in 2016, right around the corner. And we're so happy to have you featuring at the festival. Yeah, thank it's you. Wonderful, yes. Um, so I want to start with a question about love. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you, in your writing, you're expressing a wild love. Tell me what a wild love is mm -hmm. and um, maybe talk about um, how we enact love mm -hmm. in poems and why that's important to do. I think that idea of like wild love is like, you know, just sort of being wild and, you know, unabashed in our expression of what we adore and care about and want to exist in the world in a way, you know. Often our default mode, which is a necessary mode, it seems to me, is like critique, you know. So going through lives, our lives with critique. Um, and it feels to me to be something like really, really, really important. Um, more equally important, if not more important, in you know what critique needs to do is to um, show what needs correcting, mm -hmm. and what what love or celebration, in my I think idea or what I think right now, what love needs to do is to show um, what what needs preserving. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's there's something about that. So. Um, not to mention, it just feels good to like go through the world reminding yourself and other people of like how how goddamn beautiful things can be, and and to enact it in poems. How do we do that? I don't know. <laughs> into yeah, you stumble it. into. It. I don't know. I mean, but I do feel like I mean it's simple and it, you know it's like a practice of gratitude and the practice of life. You know, like. I like to ask students when I go around in classes, like, what do you love, you know? What do you love, like, um, um, my buddy Patrick Rosal, he has a poem where he talks about this, I think it's a Tagalog word that basically means a kind of, you love something or someone so much that you want to hug it so hard that it puts you and the other person in risk of bodily harm. <laughs> and I love to ask people, like, what is the thing, you know? And, and be like, and just sit still, like, let's really think of the things that you love so much that you could squeeze them, you know. <laughs> I think that's hard for people to think of. Oh my God, of course, totally, totally, because that's not what, I feel like that's a lot of, that's not a lot of what, I mean, I don't know if this is like, I mean, my experience or my feeling is that that's not a lot of what we so. do. It's a discipline that I need to like practice mm -hmm. so that I don't, um, simply go through the world saying what is wrong, you know. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. I think the messages out there for us are to look at it that way too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Not, yeah. So, yeah. So when you keep getting inundated with that, yeah. like, this is what's wrong with everything you see, right. it's hard to see what's right with it. Yeah. But maybe that's a, a job of poets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, that's, I think it is, I think it is, like, teaching or, or, mod or modeling or something in how to see, you know? I think that's the good work of anyone. You know, we, we can all do that in various ways, I think. You know. So I do have to ask you a gardening question. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm sure you've never been asked about gardening no. and poetry. You know? um, but I, I, am, I am interested, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in like thinking about the period of time that we're in right now. Yeah. So if we think about the garden as, you know, it's a continual process of life. Yeah. Um, and the writing process, you know, mm -hmm. has that cycle to it too. And there are times when it feels sort of less productive mm -hmm. or stalled. Yeah. And I think of winter maybe being that way, or at least from what I can see. So yeah. I'm interested from you, yeah. what's, what's happening sort of under the surface right now yeah. in the garden? In yeah. your garden, what's yeah. going on? that might help us think differently about those yeah, 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 yeah. times yeah. when yeah. we don't feel like much is happening. Totally, yeah. I can actually tell you what I just did this morning in my garden. So I'm actually not living in town for, for some months, so I just came back. But part of the reason I had to come back was to do a little work in my garden. Um, and what I did was, so I had these two little mini dwarf apple trees that are lovely and they're not very productive and they take up a lot of space for that needs to be used in other ways. So I have this other apple tree, it's called an Arkansas Black, and it's, um, 
it's what's called a triploid. It requires two other trees to pollinize it. Um, so, whereas most trees, usually two trees will be enough. This requires three. So, I, I'm going to graft. I took little cuttings of two trees that I cut down. They're two different kinds of trees. And they'll both work on this Arkansas black. So I took cuttings and I put them in the refrigerator. And then I'm going to graft them onto this Arkansas black tree. So I'm going to take a part of this tree that I cut down to make space and stick it onto another tree. It's crazy, right? <laughs> um, and then, That's awesome. right, and then that will help that tree get pollinated. Um, and it'll help me with space in the garden, so I'll be able to put other things in there. Uh -huh. um, it'll, uh, the wood from the apple trees, which was sad to take down a little bit, you know, they've been with me for five years. Um, that'll become nourishment for other things in the uh -huh. garden. I'll chop it up. Um, and I'll have space for this other sort of thing. So that's stuff that can go on in a garden in the winter, right? It's making space, it's rearranging, uh -huh. it's sort of like, you can't see, all it is is sticks. Like the thing I cut with this morning, it's just sticks, you know? Um, but it's going to become fruit. And it's going to make this Arkansas black tree able to produce its fruit, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's, uh, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a kind of lovely metaphor to me, um, that I won't like, that I won't, you know, parse out. I'll just say that's metaphor. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, like trees are sort of, you know, sucking their energy, you know, the roots are getting nourished, like everything sort of retreats, it does not die, it retreats. Mm -hmm. Under the soil, a soil biologist or someone could tell you like what's really, really happening. Stuff's happening. <laughs> a lot of stuff, <laughs> lot of stuff is happening, yeah. There's all kinds of magic going on. And there are all of these sort of, you know, things are breaking down, things are sort of, you know, things are being nourished, things are being fed. Um, there's also like, on the exterior, there's a kind of quieting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so a garden can look, I think, to your question, points to this, can look like a, a dead space in the winter. But it's really not at all, you know. There's like so much activity. And, and I mean, so to me, what's so beautiful about gardening or, yeah, you know, about gardening, orcharding, all these things, farming, is that you're always sort of in the process of seeing things into the future. Yeah. You know, so a tree that looks like a dead tree is in fact a tree with apples on it. You know, um, the seeds that you're ordering are in fact lots of plates of whatever you want it to be, kale or carrots or collards or whatever, you know. Um, it's, it's such a beautiful like training in, in metaphor. But it's hard to see that though. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. the training, right? That's right, yeah. The, being able to see the possibility. Mm -hmm. This is this is a moment of possibility. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So it's like that's yeah. So I'll tell you something that is also useful. The more I'm gardening, the more I feel comfortable with dying. You know, because I understand something about um, what looks to be uh, empty, quiet. Something is rich. You yeah. know. It's, um, so there's something about cycles that I understand. And there's something about, as we generate, I think work, like poetic work or something. Like we understand that there are, if you're working in a garden, you understand that there's a kind of dormancy. You know, there's a kind of quiet time that, that springs forth this other thing. But I, I feel that very much. When I'm in a garden, I understand like cycles um, a lot more deeply in my body, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> I can think of one other question. Do you yeah, do it, do it, do it. Um, and that is, as we talked about gardening, mm -hmm. I mean, and you, you light up as you mm. talk about gardening. Yeah. Too. <laughs> I know, it's great. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. Um, is there anything else that consumes you in that way that shows up in your work that mm. like, ends up in your work because it has to? I feel like, you know, like my relationships are um, so people, you know, mm -hmm. like family, friends, etc., show up in poems in, in, in a way that feels different than, but, but when I think about a lot of these poems, it's like I'm often, I'm often like sort of thinking about people that I love, you know, 
Um, so, you know, like the, th like the Fig Tree poem, for instance, that's, that's, that poem is so much about people relating, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it's also about my buddy Jay's dad, who like gave me figs, you know, um, and whose figs grow in the Bloomington Community Orchard, you know, and around because there's cuttings from it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's very much a poem about this guy, you know, my, my, my buddy's father. Um, and I, I see that a lot. It's like so much interested in like these people who I love. Um, does it start there? Does it start with the relationships or does it start by thinking about? I think sometimes it does in this book, sometimes it does. And, but sometimes I feel like some of the engine of the of the poems is like being like just so sort of like um, fired up about a beautiful occasion, you yeah. know, a, a beautiful event, you know. The fig tree poem being an example of like we're just like here looking at looking up in the fig tree, um, or uh, yeah, some of the other poems. It feels like it, it is the the garden is a real sort of um, it might be like a it's such a rich way to sort of be transported, you know. Um, yeah, that's what it is. It's a rich way to be transported. <laughs> Thank <laughs> really you. Good. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Wonderful. Yeah.